Hello, my name is George Chamberlain and I'm here in Indian Town, Florida with Robbins McIntosh, the CEO of Homegrown Shrimp USA and also a vice president with CP Foods. And today is the inauguration of this amazing transformative new shrimp farming facility that operates with absolutely zero water change, not only in the grow out system, but also in the hatchery. To my knowledge, it's the first of its kind anywhere in the world that operates in this way and it's really uh, transformative. So let me ask Robbins to tell us, how did you get to this point? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the journey. Well, there is a, there is a history to this in that the first project at CPI was involved in, it was developing an SPF breeding program, which requires nucleus breeding. Nucleus breeding means you have to seal it off from the environment. And uh, up to that point, most people would say, you have to be in Hawaii, you have to be on an island. There was no islands in the Thailand that were a facility. So we created the concept of an island surrounded by rice paddy, surrounded by rubber plantations. So a facility away from the ocean, away from farming, surrounded by other agriculture, where there was no availability of seawater. Now, it was good that we had no availability of seawater because if you have availability, you're always tempted to turn on the pump. Yes. So we went away from seawater, even a pump, not even capable. And we started, probably the oldest facility I have was in 2008. We filled it, we designed it, we filled it uh, with fresh water that we diluted with brine uh, from salt pans. And we've been using that water in the nucleus breeding, and I've got three of them now, uh, for 15 years. Wow. Now, a nucleus breeding has to have a hatchery because you have to do everything within the boundary and the grow out and everything. So we created uh, a recirculating system that we basically recreate coral reef water for a hatchery. So we take, maybe an exaggeration, sewage water, and turn it back to coral reef water. Amazing, yes. And then continue that in the hatchery. And there's different levels of processing, but it worked very successful. I mean, we have 85, 90% survival in those, in those genetic hatcheries. And then the PLs are transferred to raceways and you don't need as fine a processing of the water for a grow out as you do a hatchery. So it's an easier process, but nevertheless, it's a process that recycles the water continuously between crops and cycles and in that way, we help ensure that we don't bring in pathogens for an SPF type facility. Uh, we brought in all of the water to our SPF facilities before EMS, before EHP, before many of these diseases. So we never had encounters with these things in the broodstock facilities. Again, we were on an island uh, where we learned to use recycled water and we brought this water in well before the disease is established. So that really was the basis when we started thinking about doing farming in the United States. You know, if I was gonna do this, I knew that doing an SPF nucleus breeding, our survivals could be 95% to 45, 50 gram shrimp. Really essentially no mortality and growth rates incomparable. So if I could duplicate what we did in nucleus breeding, it would be fantastic as grow out. And so really what we have here at home grown is round culture tanks that we have in nucleus breeding uh, rectangular uh, canal shaped uh, raceway configurations. But it's the same type of aeration technology. There's no disease here. And when you have no disease, shrimp farming is actually easy. And that is the key and the advantage of the United States. We really don't have disease and therefore we can concentrate on growing the shrimp with strong, strong foundations. So we've learned the boundaries of what we do. We're doing a, a, a light flock type nitrifying system. We look for five kilos per meter square. We don't wanna be greedy and go to six, seven or eight. We wanna be happy with five, growing very fast to 25, 30 gram shrimp and just hitting those singles time after time after time and make it very routine. Again, for the markets, we wanted a system that could be harvested year round 
with consistent harvest. So you have that fresh local market that you always have harvest for. You're not waiting for seasons. You're not waiting for the next harvest. So we harvest two tanks here a week. Uh, and then we'll stock two tanks a week. So it'll be basically rotating two tanks. And that's, a, that's uh, 1,000 kilos, one ton of shrimp a week on this, what I will call a pilot demonstration scale. If this scale works, we've got properties outside that we can duplicate this 5X and we can move this up to seven or 800 tons of shrimp on this property, of which point it gets to be a relatively strong commercial venture. The other thing about homegrown, we developed it in such a way that you can rubber stamp this anywhere. It's not site specific. It doesn't, it's not coastal specific. It's not requiring anything in particular other than we have to have a source of fresh water that we can mix the salt into. Uh, we've got insulated buildings, we've got uh, temperature controls, etc. So we could, we could do this in Beijing, China. We could do this in Canada. We can do this anywhere in the United States where there might be an appetite for locally produced shrimp. And as we you know, get further into the technology development and learning from mistakes, the cost should come down. And so this is the first step. It's high cost, but five years from now, it will be lower cost. And, and it's transformative because you're using super fast growing broodstock. You have a zero water exchange system. You have self-cleaning tanks and the, the water treatment. You can combine that with all the sustainable feeds. It's uh, very efficient in labor, has a very low land footprint. I mean, all of these principles can actually work their way into outdoor mainstream shrimp farming. Oh, absolutely, also. it's principles. So you take principles from one and adopt to the other, principles from this, adopt to the other, because it's all about principles. It's yeah. not about copying directly, but take the principles that we learn. And certainly one of the principles that I've learned at CP, clean shrimp work. Stress-free environments work. How do you create those environments, uh, outdoors, indoors, uh, you can be successful. And Robbins, I also want to just take one last moment and thank you for all the work you've done during your career. Thank you for agreeing to come speak as a keynote speaker at the Shrimp Summit in Ho Chi Minh City on the 24th to the 26th of July. Uh, there's so much to learn from you. And I hope that all of you listening can come join us in, in Vietnam for this, I hope, uh, transformative event where we'll all learn and improve the whole business. I look forward to that. And I, you know, agree with your sentiments. We need more transplantory events in the industry today. We need farmers to quit thinking about prices going higher and think about reducing our costs and our efficiency. Yeah, improving the efficiency. Well, you've certainly set a high bar here. There's so much to learn and we can all learn from each other. Thank you so much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you in Vietnam.